Welcome to Dance Mobile TV. We are live with the great choreographer Chuck Maldonado. Welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> Chuck, I got to start off by uh, letting the world know how much I really appreciate the fact that you are able to take the time to, um, to have this interview with us. We realize that you know you have a busy schedule and you're so committed to the work that you do. We just want to say that we appreciate you and all of the things that you have been doing by way of the arts and also uh, mentoring the artists that you have uh, come into contact with. So if you can, um, can you just take a moment and just give us some background information about yourself? Well, I'm originally from New Jersey. I um, graduated from North Carolina a t State University, so I attended an HBCU. I um, also went to graduate school. I, I was a high school teacher, and I also um, was in corporate America. I did all that before even deciding to even dance, and it wasn't until I met a young lady by left eye from TLC oh, wow. that inspired me to do what it is that I'm doing today. Wow. And that's, this that's, all happened. That's, that's a big, quick summary, but that's pretty much so. That's that's my life. And um, originally from New Jersey, so, you know, I moved to the South for school. And um, here I am today in Hollywood doing what I never thought I would ever do in life is to be a choreographer and an artistic director in the entertainment industry. And wow, that's some good stuff. Um, we're going to go back um, just a little bit. You mentioned some great things that I wanted to talk more about. You mentioned um, going to college and then uh, deciding to be a teacher. What was it about the teaching field and you know sharing of information that attracted you? Um, when I went to school, I, I have a degree in marketing management. I never thought that I would be a teacher. It wasn't until I did corporate America for a couple of years and I decided to change my career. And one of the things that I've always wanted to do was to uh, make a difference in this world. And I thought that I could start with becoming a teacher. And that's when I went back to school and decided to get my um, degree in education and started teaching in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, that's where pretty much so I got my start in teaching. And uh, it was great because I, it was, you know, hand, uh, first hand um, experience there with the kids. I got to speak with them, I got to be a part of their lives. I had the opportunity to listen to their story. And, um, and show them that I cared. Not only, you know, of course, academically, but also, you know, in their outside life as well. So I was involved more than just a teacher. I had four after-school programs, and most of them in the arts. I had an all-male dance team, had a female dance team, had a step team, and had a co-ed dance team. Okay. And you found that uh, when you were involved in the art that this was something that you were connected to that you really enjoyed doing? Yeah, I was connected to it, but they were as well. Because not everybody's going to be a football player. Not everybody's going to be a basketball player or a cheerleader. There's other things out there. And I was able to take this child and tell them, look, if you don't have at least a B or a C average, at least, you know, you know, I'm taking these kids from F averages, to at least a C average, then you can't be a part of this organization. You can't be a part of this after school program. So it gave them, um, it inspired them, motivated, motivated them to do better academically so they could be a part of what they, what their purpose in life was, was to dance. They wanted to become dancers. Wow, that's, that's something good. Yeah. Is that something that you um, learned from your family or is that something that, you know, basically that you wanted to do to be able to help guide and direct uh, the kids? Well, my family's like that too, but uh, yeah, it has a lot to do with the way I was brought up. My mom and my dad, coming from my mom and dad, they always love, they love helping people. So I, I grew up seeing that. And um, now I wanted to make a difference. Now I was, a, I was the adult. I didn't have any kids, so I said, well, here it is. Now I have hundreds of kids. Wow. And I was able to um, inspire them and teach them what I was taught at an early age in my life. Now what's amazing about uh, that the work that you were doing with the kids that's something behind the scenes mm. so you went from being behind the scenes to deciding that you wanted to uh, 
get involved in dancing? Right. Um, I was I was part of the Atlanta Hawks dance team in '97. It was the very first year that they decided to have male dancers at the end on the NBA team, and um, I auditioned, and I had never auditioned before in my life for anything as far as dance. But I've always loved the arts, and I've always danced as a street dancer. And um, even though it was a technical dance team, the choreographer saw something in me. He said, that you have the gift, as he called it. You have the gift. And um, that year, they actually hired three male dancers, and I was one of the three male dancers. So I was dancing at night with the Atlanta Hawks dance team, and I was a high school teacher during the daytime. And eventually, I realized that this was my purpose this was my gift, and um, I told my principal, I said, you know what, I think I'm going to step out, out on faith and do this full time, and gave my two week notice, and, um, and quit my job as a teacher to be a dancer. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And had you had any um, dance coaches or anyone doing the work that you're doing as far as helping, you know, others that's coming behind you? as far as bringing you in the industry, was there anybody out there like that? Uh, I'm going to say yes or no, it's a kind of, okay, Jimmy Locust was the choreographer. He used to dance for Janet, he's also danced and, and been a part of Michael Jackson's career. And he was our choreographer at the um, Atlanta Hawks dance um, team. The crazy part about that was he, he was really tough. He's an old school choreographer and he was kind of like, this is how you do it kind of thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give him credit okay. for the very beginning because had he not been that tough with me, I don't think I would have learned that fast or would have been um, as you know as good as I've gotten throughout the years. Okay. And I, when I say good, I'm not saying like oh I'm this amazing, but I'm just saying as far as learning different styles, he taught me ballet, jazz, modern, hip hop. So it allowed me to be diverse. Wow. It's allowed me to grow faster and move up the industry, you know, move within the industry a lot faster. Okay. So Jimmy Locus, I have to say, was my very first choreographer, my first coach, and whether he knows it or not, he inspired me to be better. Oh, Even though he was great. tough. That's great. <laughs> Thank you, was tough. <laughs> that's good. So at that point, you, like you said, you um, told your family, school don't notice, this is what I'm going to do, yeah. and then at some point you ended up in L.A.? Yeah, and um, they thought it was um, a little crazy for it. They're like, okay, you're going to leave a job that has benefits to hope that you're going to be a dancer. Hope that this happens for you. And I said, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. But who really inspired me, my next coach, and this is going to be the person who really pushed me, was Lisa Left Eye Lopez. I met Lisa during that time, and she helped me to transition from being a teacher to a dancer, a businessman, and move to LA in 2001, which unfortunately was a year that she died. What were some of the things that she would say that inspired you? Like, well, you should just come, you can do it. What was she saying? Well, she said, well, first of all, like I said, I had high school teams and uh, dance teams that I coached and choreographed for. She came to one of my shows and she said, wow, this is amazing what you can do with young people who don't have any form of training. Just imagine what you could do with adults or with people that do this for a living. You have something special. And I think that you should consider following that dream. And I was like, oh, you know, I was comfortable. I was making money. I had benefits. I was okay with being a teacher. And I thought my next move was to be a principal. And she said, you know, you should really think about it because I don't think that's what your purpose is in life. I really don't think so. And then she promised me her first R&B group once they came out. She was working on a group called Black, mm -hmm. who was later on signed to Columbia Records, who I then, she kept her promise, became the choreographer, and I was fortunate enough to dance for them. And I was also their high school teacher. So on tour, I was tutoring choreographing and dancing. So I got three jobs. Wow, that's that's some good stuff. That's a pretty amazing experience that you had with her to where she was able to share that with you yeah. before her, her tragic uh, incident happened. And you have that today to be able to share with the youth and, and future generations to be able to 
um, inspire them as far as um, following their dreams and their passion. That's some good stuff. And what's so crazy, like all along, I've, I learned how to dance before you even walk. So, but I just didn't know that was my purpose. I didn't know that was my, my, my reason for being here. I thought it was being a marketing manager for American Express. And then mm -hmm. I thought it was being a high school teacher. And I think that she saw something that I didn't see in me. And she predicted it before it even happened. And she, she predicted that I would be a choreographer. She predicted that I would be a dancer. She predicted that one day I would move to L.A. Wow. That's amazing. And um, as soon as my project finished, because my first projects were dancing choreographer for Black, working for Pink, and working for Kelly Price, and working for Left Eye on her first solo project. Those were my first projects based out of Atlanta, Georgia, um, in the industry. How, How did you get such assignments and you just walked through the door? Um, people that believed in me, her, she, she made all the connections for me. She was That's the one that great. connected all the dots for me. She believed in me even when I didn't believe in myself. And if someone else can believe in me like that, then I knew that I needed to start to believe in myself and start to say, you know what, maybe, maybe this is something that I'm supposed to be doing. I need to, I need to at least try, and um, I did. And I'm so glad that I was able to succeed, move to LA, and do what she already had envisioned for me mm -hmm. before she died. She got to see it. Wow, that's great. She got to see yeah. your work and just the inspiration that um, she offered to you. She got to see the fruits of, of her right. energy come through you. That's right, that's right. So she saw not only with her group Black, but also choreographed her first and only solo artist video called Block Party. She's, um, and then she saw me get my first job in LA, which was the video Get Your Freak On with Missy Elliott. Yes. That was my first like dance LA audition. And I, I booked that and, and she got to see me dance on a video. That's good stuff. Yeah. I want to ask you, how did getting your education first help prepare you for Hollywood and choreography as far as working with different people? You develop certain people skills when you were working with um, the kids in the school system. Right. And how, when you all of a sudden got to Hollywood and you started getting these job assignments, how did getting your education first help you with that? Well, first, like you said, it helped me to deal with people, all different types of people. Um, it made me think smarter. I, I saw it as a business, and um, I knew that it was a business, and I think that my past experiences kind of set things up for me for my future. In other words, example, Stomp the Art. They were looking for a choreographer that understood HBCU life, which is historically black college universities, who was a part of a black Greek letter organization and who also understood stepping and dancing and combining all that. And they searched all over. And, I, and in Hollywood, I was the only one that had every single block checked off. Went to a black college, pledged a black fraternity, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, stepped in my, um, in my fraternity chapter, and, um, and also understood choreography and dance because I was already living that life. All of these past experiences in college, whether they be social or academic, helped me to move faster in the industry. And I knew that I had to move faster because I started later than everybody else wow. in order for me to catch up. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Did the education uh, outside of that situation become a qualifier from what you've experienced? Has it, did it become a qualifier? Meaning that in that case, you met all of those qualifications as far as the things that they were looking for, as far as a profile, mm -hmm. HBCU and so on. Did Were there other instances where the education may have made a difference? Oh, absolutely. I, I think so. For me, I made connections with other producers and directors who also lived a life, who's been a part of the been, uh, Black Greek Letter Organization, or who might have attended an HBCU, or, or um, a similar, just similar stories allowed me to be able to connect with those producers, those directors, those casting people and allow me to book that job over someone who may have not had those past experiences. Wow. And um, like I said, it just helped me to move faster, um, smarter, and um, you know, definitely the, the speed, I needed to speed up. 
my thing was, this was my goal. As soon as I got to LA was, I needed to dance for a few years so people could respect me as a dancer and understand that I, I, I know the business. I just didn't move and become a choreographer. Then I wanted to assist. I had a plan. It wasn't that I just went out there and said, boom. And I think I learned this from being in school. You know, doing projects and how to plan your your life. <clears throat> and my next thing was to assist choreographers so that I could understand what their job was. And then I wanted to step out and do it on my own. And that's when in 06, that was my first opportunity to really step out in Hollywood as a choreographer when I did Stomp the Art. That was my first choreography job in Hollywood. Wow. And what was that experience like when you called your parents and said, I landed at mom? Um, you know what? I, I think that they didn't really understand the level of you know success. So at first it was kind of like, oh, mom, I'm, I'm, I'm being put on hold for this. Oh, mom, I booked this. Come on, they're happy. Of course they're happy for me because they see that I'm you know, making money, that I'm, being, I'm able to take care of myself. But I don't think they really understood the level. And until this day, I, don't, I still don't think that they really understand it as much. They're kind of just very proud of me. And they know that, I, um, that I'm doing something that I love to do and that I'm passionate about it. And as long as I'm happy, they're happy. I think that's, you know, for them. But when I told them, of course, they were like, oh, I'm so proud of you, son. You said you were going to do it, and you did it. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you. You know, I got that feedback, which was great. I have a very supportive family. But, you know, they're, they're more like, if I, you know, if I decided to be a shoemaker, they would be happy for me as well. Mm -hmm. They would be like, that's what you want to do. Do it. Did they ever come see you perform? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, they've seen me perform as a dancer. I brought them on set on uh, things that I've choreographed. Um, I've also uh, taken them to all of my master, not all of them, some of my master workshops. Mm -hmm. They come to see see me interact with the kids and, and just sitting on the side, just smiling and being proud parents. So that's great. Thanks for that. Um, one of the things that um, we pride ourselves on is trying to get the right information to help other dancers and also help parents to understand more about the arts, to understand more about dance, to understand more about the industry. Mm -hmm. And you are the perfect person uh, that can help, you know, in all, all aspects of our culture to understand really what the insides and the behind the scenes, uh, what goes on behind the scenes is. And I think that, um, we're very um, honored to be able to, to interview so we can get information like this. So some of the questions that I'm going to present is going to be based on trying to offer information um, to the youth. And, and one of the things that I, I want to um, ask you about is when you started to get your, your job assignments right toward the beginning, did you know that you had to carry yourself as a professional? Yeah, I knew that only because I was older and I already had worked in corporate America. So I knew that I had to be a professional. The way I dressed, the way I looked, the way I spoke, um, the way I treated people, I understood all of that. I knew that. But I think that younger people don't understand that it is a business and it's how you present yourself. It makes a lot, it makes a huge difference. Um, I also know, knew that I had to be likable so not only professional, but I had to be a likable person. People had to like me, especially those who were hiring me. And um, But professionalism is very important. Being on time, um, understanding um, the scripts that you're reading, understanding the project, um, understanding how to communicate with these um, producers and directors and casting people. Um, but like, like, like you said, being professional, came a little bit more natural for me because I was a little older than everyone else. I already had experienced that, not only in corporate America, but as a teacher and um, also as a dancer. I was always, my eyes and ears were always open. And I'm glad you mentioned that your eyes and ears was always open. Now, with social networks, there's everybody's eyes and everybody's ears. Mm -hmm. um, Back probably when you were trying to do some of the things that you were doing, some of these um, networks may not even have been out or even wasn't as popular. Do you think from all of your years of experience now, do you think a dancer's reputation can supersede itself, meaning that it's important for dancers to try to maintain a good reputation because by the time they come before you, 
you may have already heard good or bad things about them. Is that important to you? I try not to judge people before I meet them, but yes. A lot of choreographers do hear stories about certain dancers. And then, you, I mean, you go through Instagram and you see what they tweet or some, some things are negative. And even though you don't know them, you kind of feel like, okay, do I want to work with this person? You know, because you start to follow them and they start to follow you. But, um, yeah, I think it's easier for us to say, well, we just saw a half-naked picture of this person. Do we want this person to be on this set with us? Uh, we just saw them go off about some other dancer. Do we want someone who is negative to be on set with us? That's always, it's always this. So that's why you have to be careful. What you do. When I was growing up or when we were starting, when I started my career as a dancer, there was no social media at all, which made it harder for us to be dancers. Yes. And because, you know, it's, now it's a lot easier, well, a little bit easier, because at least you can be, you know, seen and recognized. They'll post up a link of a YouTube thing and you can watch them dance or you can watch their, crea you know, their creative um, choreography or whatever. But, um, but yeah, but to get back to your question, people, dancers have to understand they have to be careful with that social media stuff. They post a lot of stuff on there that make you say, hmm, do I want to work with that person? Even corporate America is announcing that they're checking people's Facebook pages and they're also putting that down as a requirement that they're using the social network sites as a way to get a gauge on individuals before they they possibly hiring so I was just asking yeah. you know um, if Hollywood you know maybe takes these things into consideration yeah, yeah they definitely use, they use uh, social media to determine if they go even hire so some people go on there and see how many followers you have and if you have thousands and thousands or millions of followers and they'll hire you just because of that because they know that you'll bring in the people whether it be to watch the show or to watch the uh, the movie or whatever which, to me, I, I don't do that. Yeah. I'm, I, I guess I'm more old school when it comes to that. Just because you have 350,000 followers and you're a dancer, which that's incredible. I mean, I commend them for that. But I'm not going to hire you because you have 350,000 followers. Okay. I don't do that. As far as uh, street dancers preparing themselves uh, from a dance perspective, do you recommend that they take a variety of different classes so that by the time that they audition in, in front of someone such as yourself, depending on the type of movie or situation that you may be overseeing, that you know they can display different types of dance styles? Yeah, I, I always encourage b-boys and, and freestylers or tricksters to take as many classes as they possibly can. Because even though they're on set, let's say if I hire a particular dancer to do a, a specialty act, whether it be b-boying or whatever, you still have to pick up choreography because we still have to stage this out. It just can't be go out there and do what you want to do. So I always encourage them to take other people's classes, to take not only hip-hop, but ballet, jazz, modern, just everything. Because to me, the more diverse of a dancer you are, the better chance you have of getting that job. And a perfect example of that is, I remember one year they were um, auditioning for the movie Garfield, and they were looking for a b-boy, and um, they only called in b-boys for that audition. Well, I crashed the audition, because I'm like, well, I could do flips, because I, I, I'm a gymnast as well, so I could do flips. I mean, I'm not a b-boy, but I could do flips, and um, I, I did my flips. Everybody did their amazing you know, tricks and all that stuff. And, but in the last part of the audition was, okay, let's see if you can take direction. Learn these few A counts and then incorporate that with your freestyle. And no one can do the choreography because they weren't trained. They didn't train themselves. So they kind of messed up that opportunity and I wound up being Garfield for the movie. Wow, look at that. Yeah, so, and it was, I mean, I'm not as good of a b-boy as them or, or, or a trickster, but because I can pick up choreography, you know, that made a difference for them because the choreographers, choreographers really need someone who can not only do tricks, but can also pick up choreography so that you can take direction. Okay, so you recommend uh, diversifying highly, their portfolio? Highly recommend it. And then back in the day, they used to not, they, they didn't want to as much, but now you see a difference. You see more, I have me, way more b-boys in my class now than back when I started teaching in 2002. They were like, nah, you know, we're good. But now they're like, the new one, they understand, they get it. Because they want to be diverse. They want to be able to, they don't want to say no to a job. Okay. Yeah, now, that's great, thanks. Yeah. Now, as far as um, the parents, 
being um, on both sides of the coin, you were able to experience both. How can, from um, your experience, how can the parents be involved in helping to support the youth as far as um, getting to, to your level, whether it's helping them get to, um, re uh, to take the different classes or whether it's helping them to get signed to an agency, how can parents get involved in helping yeah. the kids to be successful? It, it all depends on what age group you're talking about. If they're under 18 years old, then if the child is telling the parent that they want to become a dancer one day, I would definitely encourage them to not only support them financially, they're going to need financial support, a lot of these kids. Um, because in order to take classes, and classes can be very expensive, just like college can be very expensive, you're going to have to pay for those classes. And, um, and believe in them. I mean, even just verbal support, saying that you can do this, if this is what you want to do, um, being there for them, taking them to, their, to um, their destination, their rehearsals, their classes. But the most important thing, I think a lot of us, even like with myself, and even though I was a little bit older, I didn't have a regular job. My parents supported me financially for a little while, and that's going to be very important. A lot of um, kids, they move to L.A. when they're 18 years old. They don't have a dance job, and they it's a lot harder than what they thought it was going to be. And they don't have a regular job either because they're trying to train, they're trying to go to these auditions, and then they're left alone. And... Um, have to shack up with you know five six people in one one bedroom some of them sleep out of their car I've known people that sleep out of their car mm. and that's really sad because they have parents and your parents can support you for a couple of months or you know get to get you so that you can get on your feet and you can you know pursue your purpose in life which is obviously to dance if you're sleeping in the car you obviously love what you do you would do it for free yes so um, that's going to be a, a supporting them uh, financially is going to be very important and, and also encouraging them, these kids, these young people. Because I, I also know, ki know kids that parents are like, more like, you know, I told you not to go. I told you it was going to be hard. And all this negative talk is just going to, I mean, negative, being negative is like cancer. It's just going to keep feeding into these kids' body and eventually they're going to believe that they can't succeed. And if you, as a parent, believe they're not going to succeed, then of course they're not going to believe in themselves and what's going to happen is they're going to wind up um, coming back home yes. and missing out on that opportunity. Now here's a, here's a question that, um, that I think a lot of the parents are concerned about that um, they don't have uh, access to someone such as yourself or someone in the industry and parents would like to know uh, can kids actually make a living off of dance? Now, outside of yourself, is this something that is opening up for dancers to where you can give an answer and say, well, either yes or no, there have to be, you know, like a wait or two, or is there, is there a real opportunity for dancers to get to a level to where they can make a living just off of dancing? Yes, there is, as long as you don't give up. As long as you don't give up, yes. I own my own house. I have my own car. And um, yes, you can live very comfortably as a dancer. You can make six digits or more as a dancer. And then as a choreographer, you can, I mean, I know choreographers that are millionaires. So you can even be a millionaire. And then the good thing about that is that you just keep moving up. I mean, you become the next Debbie Allen. You become, you know, um, that next, you know, whoever Paul Abdul. And because dance, I think people are recognizing dance a little bit more than they did in the past, uh, which, you know, with all the reality shows yes. and stuff, I think that the kids can really live a decent life. And they're now starting to put dancers in the forefront, where we're, we're now the, the star. You know, when we're, like, dancing, well, like, so for example, even dancing with the stars, even though it's about the star, they, they, they also know who their, who their partner is, yes. which is choreographing and everything. So... Yes, to answer your question, I believe that they could live a really good life. My thing is, get as many of those royalty jobs as you can, commercials, movies, because then you can become part of the union, and then you can also have benefits as well, your pension, you know, your health plans, all that stuff like that. And that, that's going to be very important. I know that's important. It was important for my family. It didn't matter how much money I was making to them. It was like, well, what if you, something happens to you? God forbid. What are you going to do? You don't have no, no health insurance because you don't have a regular job. But now that's being offered to dancers. 
You can get health plans. You can have a pension. You can have retirement. You can have all that. You can have life insurance through SACS. We're not just guild after. Okay. So yeah, they can. All right. They that's can. that's very good. That's very yeah. important because I think for so long that you know that has always been uh, a concern yeah. of just artists in general, and even more so the dancers. So that's good to know that they could um, that they could make a living. I'm sure parents would really appreciate that information. So now I want to transition. I want to transition back to you. Mm -hmm. Recently, I'm sure that you're aware of the fact that uh, Mr. Nelson Mandela just passed away. And I remember um, listening to an interview that you had with Anthony where you were able to have a great experience in um, South Africa. And I would just like for you um, to talk about that because you know, what Mr. Mandela was able to do as far as um, believing, in some, believing in something, standing up for people, um, bringing hope to a situation where at the time it had seen, you know, there was no hope. You know, I just want to know from you, what was your experience like and how, what were you able to take away from that as a, a human, a person? That was one of my favorite jobs, and I have to say it was because I've never been to Africa before, and the moment that I stepped foot into the country, um, the continent, it was it was an emotional experience for me. Just stepping foot and saying, okay, I'm in the motherland was a, an experience for me. So from the first step to the last step was nothing but... Um, how can I explain this in a way where because it was everything was a, it was about emotions me learning more about the culture understanding South Africa what they went through you know with the apartheid and understanding who Nelson Mandela was and um, not only was he um, someone who helped himself but his people but he changed the world and made a difference for each and every one of us uh, was crazy I learned that in South Africa I mean, they're divided into almost three different groups. We have the black people, the colored people, and the white people. I didn't know, like, that some of the light-skinned people considered themselves colored. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Wow. Like, it was different, because I would, I would say, so, you're African, I mean, you're, you're considered black. They're like, no, I'm not black, I'm colored. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm confused. Because to me, you look like a light-skinned black person. And I said, no, it's because we're mixed, we consider ourselves. And then most of the dancers, I had 19 dancers on, on a set, they've never done anything before besides their own local stuff. So this was their very first movie. This was a Warner Brothers movie. So this was huge for what them. What was the name of that movie? Uh, House Party 5. House Party 5, okay. It was House Party 5. It was the fifth installment of House Party. But Tonight's Tonight is the real name. House Party Tonight's Tonight. But it's the fifth installment. These kids were born first generation free from the apartheid. So for them to go from parents who were part of the apartheid and then them being born first generation free and their parents being able to see them do things like a movie and allowing them to do a movie was just very, it was an emotional thing for not only for them for, but for myself. And um, I'm sorry, I always get emotional when I talk about it. It, it makes you feel good to, to, to connect and yeah. share that energy and that experience. And you, that's taking you right back to your days of being a teacher where right. you wanted to have an impact. So you're coming back, you know, in connection with your purpose. Yeah, and it, it's just, it's, I still, when I talk about it, I get emotional because some of these kids were able to take me to their neighborhoods and to see where they lived and how they lived. And to them, you know, if they made $40, $100 a week, that was like a lot of money. And to make the money that they were able to make doing this movie made a difference, um, not only for themselves, but for their family. Which allowed me to see life differently. And that's when I knew that, okay, I need to make a difference in some of these kids' lives. Not only with this movie, but uh, I know that financially I can afford to even help some of these kids. So what I started doing was taking 10% of my paycheck and started giving it to some of them. Started giving away my clothes. And allowing them because if they like something, then I gave it to them. If it was a pair of sweats they liked, then I gave them the sweats. If it was a shirt, I gave them the shirt. Um, if we went to the mall and they saw a pair of sneakers that they knew they couldn't afford, because the prices were still the same. Wow. 
It wasn't because, you know, there were a lot of poor people there that the prices were going to be. A pair of Nike was still a hundred and something American dollars. They weren't, they weren't going to be cheaper just because they were in South Africa. So when you convert that to a rand, which is like um, every nine rand equals one dollar. So now you're talking about 900 something, 900 rands for a pair of sneakers for them. And, you know, they were making barely... 200 rands. They couldn't afford a pair of sneakers. I have a question. So for me to be able to just go into a store and say, hey, whatever you want, I'll buy it. Just grab your your favorite pair. Wow. I'm sorry. I get it. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. That, that, <laughs> I always, that. Every time I talk about that, it's the only thing that makes me want to cry because, um, you know, I, I, A, I miss them. Mm -hmm. It's been over a year since I've seen them. And I know that they're still there struggling their life, you know, after the movie, you know, that was the best, like, two, two months of their life. Um, I see them tweet about it, how, you know, um, that movie going there to South Africa just changed their life. So I'm just happy that I was a part of their life, and I'm happy that I will continue to be a part of their life. And they know that whenever they need anything, whether it be a recommendation, whether it be a, sometimes they ask me for a video of me, just saying, hey, this is Chuck Maldon, I'm a choreographer, and I just want to give a high recommendation to B-Girl V because she was my assistant and she did an amazing job. Even if I could just do a video like that for them and they couldn't use that for their reel, I, d I would always go out of my way to do anything for them. Off the top of your head, do you remember some names just off the top of your head? Yeah, of course, B -girl V, she was one of my assistants, Nicholas, um, Bantu. Like all of those kids were just amazing, each and every one of them. Um, uh, I was really close with um, Nathaniel Nathan. He was a really, uh, I got really close with him and helped him out as much as I possibly could, um, especially with his family. Um, you know, his mom was going through a really hard time. And what's so crazy that 10% of one of my one week check was able to pay for six months of her rent and food. 10% of one of my week check was able to pay for six months of her rent and her food. Wow. I allowed her to stay in her place for, for six more months. It's amazing. And, and that to me is just crazy. That gives you an example of yes. no kind of life they have. Wow, that's amazing. Were they able to um, to take you to some of the different locations, maybe even where um, Nelson Mandela? Oh yeah, I went to Robben Island. Okay. They took me to Robben Island, where you know, of course, he was jailed, and um, I I got to walk throughout you know the island and, and went through the all the different cells and and got to see Nelson Mandela's jail cell where he spent most of his time. Um, it was a very small space. And, and describe it, what the walls and just... The walls were light green, but it was very gloomy, it was very cold. It was um, very dark to me. Um, the floor was very hard and cold. He slept on a mat that was probably less than an inch thick. He had a pillow and he had a bucket so that he could use as a bathroom. Um, and just look, I, I, it feels like it just was just yesterday, just looking through that and just sitting there and watching that space where this man lived for 20 some odd years and seeing that he changed not only his country, South Africa, but the world in such a small space inspired me to be better. It inspired me to do more because I have freedom. I have the income to do it. I have the resources to do it, but he changed the world out of that small space. Yeah. Just, just inspired me, motivated me. That's and I waited for the whole, everyone who was a part of the tour to go, and it was just me, and one of the parents, one of the actor's parents went with me. And um, everybody asked, I, I'm just one where I just want to spend this one moment with this space. And I sat there for at least five, six, seven minutes, and tears just started coming down my face. Did they let you take pictures? I took pictures. Okay. I had pictures of me yeah. looking into the into I, the cell. I'd like to um, see you know those yeah. pictures. That'd yeah. be great. Yep, yeah, I have that. Wow. So um, uh, the ride there was crazy because the waters were very rough. 
you know, from Cape uh, from Cape Town to Robben Island, the rough, the waters were very, the ship was very bouncy, and I got sick, like literally got sick, but I was so excited just to go, but on my way back, I got really sick, I almost threw, I was like about to throw up sick because I, I mean it was just crazy that ride, so I could only imagine what those, what they went through, probably being you know shackled, and um, just going through that water and what what they're thinking about and just getting there and then being stripped from their clothes and just I mean just like it was just, just imagining that just made me you know just very uh, made me appreciate what I have. That, that was an amazing uh, experience that you that you got to experience. I, I can tell that yeah you know it, it's still um, you're still connected with that that yeah. energy. That's amazing. I also wanted you to tell for maybe some of the parents that is watching this interview for the first time mm -hmm. and may not be aware of some of the work that you've done, mm -hmm. if you can just tell, you know, some of the work that you have done as far as uh, performance and choreography. Okay, so this is going to include everything, dancing, choreography, of course I've danced with Usher, uh, Chris Brown, I've choreographed and danced with, um, Missy Elliott was one of my first jobs. Um, in, in Hollywood, actually, so when I got there, I was able to dance and be in four or five of her videos. I toured with people like Tamiya, and I've worked with Black, um, Kelly Price. I toured with Pink, a dance with Pink. Um, I even got a chance to choreograph a couple of things for her in the beginning of her career. I've done over 25 movies that include everything from um, Justin to Kelly to You Got Served to Dream Girls. I've even got the chance to work with people like Steven Spielberg in the movie Indiana Jones. Um, I've worked with people like Debbie Allen. Um, this is crazy. Wow. I, yeah, you just think about all these people that you had the opportunity to work with. I've done Disney, I've done TV, the things, kid shows from Disney, Nickelodeon. I've also done reality shows like So You Think You Dance, America's Best Dance Crew, and um, Dancing with the Stars. I've, um, did I say Dancing with the Stars twice? Yes. So you think of dance. So you think of dance, dancing with the stars, and America's Best Dance. Because those are like the three top, what are the, are the three top dance um, TV shows out there, reality shows out there. Uh, I've worked with many, many, many artists. Um, everyone from J Lo to, um, you know, like I mentioned before, the male artists. I think I've danced with just about every, every male artist, even including Omarion. Um, Oh, what did you else? do anything with X Factor? Oh yes, of course. X Factor is another show that I did. I did uh, the beginning of their second season when they were going through the process of actually picking um, their artists to be a part of the show. And then shortly after that, I left to go to Africa. Wow. And that's when I experienced that and did the movie um, House Party. I know that this is one of those things, you know, when you have an interview, you're like, oh, I should have mentioned that. Yes, I forgot that yes. I mentioned this. Well, as you think of it, you know, you can yeah. bring it up. Of course, Lisa left I Lopez. You know, okay. she was the beginning of, of, of my career. And I, um, one of the things that I did in 96 before I even started being a part of the industry was that I, I choreographed the opening uh, ceremonies of the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia. And I wasn't dancing or choreographing then, but I auditioned for Kenny Ortega, who... Um, is or was Michael Jackson's artistic director and he also is, he's a director too because he does all the high he's a director of High School Musical he was a director of Michael Jackson's last movie that they did because he was artistically directing that and then did a document on that but uh, amazing guy great guy he gave me my first chance to actually dance uh, before I even was dancing in the industry I auditioned as a stepper they were looking for 400 steppers he thought it was very important to bring in stepping in, uh, because we was in Atlanta. You know, we have four black uh, colleges and universities there. Um, it was a predominantly African-American city. Why not have stepping? We have to make sure, he wanted to make sure that, he wanted to make sure that we had a little bit of everything involved in the opening ceremonies. I auditioned by myself as a stepper. And um, he pulled me to the side and said, what is your name? I said, my name is Chuck Maldonado. He said, have you ever danced before professionally? I said, no. He said, have you ever choreographed anything before? I said, no, sir. He said, what do you do for a living? I said, um, I'm a high school teacher. Really? He said, okay, cool. Left it at that. A week later, I get a phone call, a number I don't recognize. I don't pick it up. He leaves a message. He says, hey, Chuck, this is um, Kenny Ortega, artistic director of the opening and closing ceremonies of the 1996 Olympic Games. 
I just wanted to ask you if you wouldn't mind, A, not only dancing in the Olympics, but if you would kindly assist me in choreographing for the 400 steppers that we're going to have. Wow. And I was like, oh my, I, was, I mean, I kept that message forever until, you know, until I left. Got another cell phone. Got another cell phone. <laughs> so I kept that message, and of course I called them back, and I accepted, and um accepted the job and for three months, which was during the summer, which was great because I was a teacher during the year and then those three months I was I was choreographing and dancing the Olympics in nineteen ninety six and I think after that was my biggest thing. My first thing for my biggest thing because it was like over two point something billion people watching. It was one of the first times that every single country in the world participated because it was a centennial celebration. Mm -hmm. So it had it just it it really it really um, made me look at uh, dance differently and, and the arts a lot more different even though I didn't really tap into it again until like later on okay. you know a year later I auditioned for the Hawks and got that but then that wasn't still the industry and it wasn't until 99 that Lisa called me and said Chuck okay I'm ready for you we got black they're ready to go they're signed to Columbia Records you're going to start choreographing for them and then after I finished that job two years later in 2001 is when I moved to L.A. and started working and dancing for Missy Elliott. That's amazing how things just fell into place it just like that. Fell into, that's how I knew it was, I was destined to be a choreographer. This was my destiny. This was my purpose in life. I was always passionate about it, but I never knew that you know following your passion would, would create your purpose. That's yes. your purpose. And that's what it really is. And, um, and now I'm, I'm love, I love what I do. Um, I, I would do it for free if I had to. But m most important now, more than money, more than fame, more than success, all this stuff, I get to touch people's lives. And that's the most important thing to me. It's, it's amazing how you can go somewhere and someone can come up to you literally in tears and say, you inspired me to be better. You inspired me to dance. You inspired me to move to L.A. I am who I am today because of following your life. And, and, um, and that's great. And talking about that, I'm glad that you, you brought up um, sort of like your, your purpose in moving forward, because I noticed you mentioned changing lives and moving forward. Mm -hmm. How do you, what would you like to do moving forward to make a difference as far as changing people's lives and also with, with your career? How, how would you like to position yourself to be able to... Yeah you know, help make a difference? Well, one of the things I did was for become a choreographer. I knew that as a choreographer I could audition and I could also hire these people. So I could make changes in people's lives that way. Um, some of my future goals is to become maybe a, um, definitely a producer. I want to be able to direct one day. I want to be able to, I have my own company now. I just got incorporated a year and a half ago. It's Chuck Maldonado Entertainment Incorporated. And within my company, you know, I raise money now. Now, I, because of what happened in South Africa, I raise money and I give 10% of my income away. It's kind of like tithing. Yes. It is tithing. Whether I'm giving it to the church or I'm giving it to someone, I'm giving it to a dancer to um, start their career. Mm -hmm. I'm doing things of that nature now. So, you know, now it's not even about the money anymore. It's, all, it's Well, I need money because I need money to help people. Yes. And I also need opportunities because I need to be put in those positions where I can hire those people and make a difference in their life. So right now I'm just creating my company and building that up so that I can hire more and get more jobs and change more lives and do whatever it is that I, I need to do to make a difference in all of these young people's lives and create it and get them just to you know, live their dream because now I'm living my dream. So for the producers that are out there that are figuring out some of the, whether it's movies, television series, or whatever it is that they're trying to come up with or figure out what the next uh, great thing is, what would you like to say to them as far as, you know, how you can fit into helping them to, to create a vision? Wow, um, I like to create reality shows with some of these producers based around our lives. Um, allowing people to understand what we do. I, I, we're behind the scenes. I'm, once I became a choreographer, I became a behind the scene person. So I'm not seen anymore. I'm not dancing with the artists. Um, I would love to create shows, but I don't want to create a show where we're fighting for jobs, where we're talking about each other. I want to create a positive show to uplift dancers and choreographers in the industry. Um, I want to 
uh, and use that so that we can make now these dancers and these choreographers the next star so that they can open up doors for other people and for other dancers that are coming up in the industry. Um, just creating positive um, reality shows and uh, dance shows. Sometimes it becomes about the ratings, so much about the ratings. And I understand the ratings thing. I understand that you have to have high ratings in order to keep your show. I understand all that, believe me. So anybody out there, you don't think I understand. I do. I've done 25 movies, yeah. and I've done enough TV shows and um, um, TV movies to understand the difference. But I think that we just gonna have to step out there in faith and not start creating some of these more positive things for this so that kids can see that it's not about fighting, it's not about, you know, all this negativity and all this other stuff. Not taking nothing away from no, no, the no, show. It, it sounds like you yeah. wanna put together a responsible yeah. show and that's that's something good for society, it's good for the youth and it's good for our well being as human mm -hmm. beings. We need something good. Uh, a good energy within us, so that's a great idea that you have for that. Yeah. And also, when I mean, even some of the games, I know a lot of kids they love being on Xbox and you know PlayStation and all that stuff. I mean, I want to even start creating more um, dance games because oh. there is a high level of obesity in this country, and we have a lot of kids now that are growing up with type two diabetes and so on. So I think that we get them up and moving and moving their bodies and losing some of that weight and eating a lot more healthier. I want to also want to create something that teaches kids how to eat healthier. Just because you're eating healthy doesn't mean that you're losing taste. A lot of kids think that. I mean, I see it all the time. It's a shame when you walk to some of these high schools because, you know, I do, I speak at some schools or I go there, teach classes and, and how our people, and I say people, I mean every people, all people, human, the human race, are so obese, I can't believe how you could weigh, be that big and only be like 15, 16, 17 years old. These kids are shortening their lives. Mm -hmm. and, I know, and they, and they want to be dancers. No, that's, that's <laughs> really important be dancers. That as a society because you always hear, um, you know, when you catch the news that, you know, on one end we're, and we're spending too much money, you know, to, to fight ailments, whether it's diabetes or child obesity or just whatever it is that 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 is is plaguing our, our society we're, we're fighting it on the back end meaning right. after it happened and some of the things that you're suggesting is proactive yeah. solutions to health and wellness right. you know whether it's using the arts or consultation or right. getting them involved in, in video games that will get them moving and you have your choreography uh, skill set and your experience in the industry to know from these movies that you have done the movement that the youth enjoy doing and you can bring all of that to the table to create right. these types of things that will help the, the, the kids and at the same time be fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty that's much great. it. That just sums it all up right there. So that's pretty much all what I would like to do and, and to make a difference and, you know, in this industry today. and. And plus, the more jobs you create, the more shows you have, the more people are working, the better the economy becomes and the healthier we become because we're moving and we're dancing and we're doing things that we really love to do. Some of these kids are scared to dance. Some of these young boys don't want to take classes because they think it's for girls. Yeah. It's just crazy. You know, you go, I, I, I teach class for kids that are younger than 18 and I say 90 to 95 percent of the student body are females. And then when you go to Hollywood, it's a little bit different. You know, it's still more females, but at least it, it almost evens out a little bit more. Some of these males, some of these guys are just scared to take classes. Wow, that's amazing. They're scared to take classes. So to conclude, Chuck, um, I want you to um, tell us about anything that you would like um, the world to know, or or in addition, um, you can um, thank anyone that you. I would like to thank. I know you worked with a lot of different artists, and you know you've been on a on a lot of different platforms. So this is the opportunity. Um, you can use this opportunity to um, share publicly with the world. Right. You, um, know. you know, there's a lot. Of, first, I have to thank my family for being supportive of all of my decisions, even when they sounded crazy. Um, I would love to thank Jimmy Locus for giving me my training in the very beginning of my career. And I'd like to thank Lisa Left Out Lopez for making me see what I didn't see, which was, um, you know, my purpose in life, which was to be a dancer choreographer. 
there are a lot of people I can sit here and, and thank, you know, people like even Hi-Hat, who gave me my first job, she's a choreographer in LA, she gave me my first dance job with Missy Elliott, um, Dave Scott, who um, allowed me to choreograph Stomp the Yard with him, um, because at that time I didn't have a name in choreography, and they had to bring in a choreographer that was well known, who has done something, and he allowed to share that credit, and allowed me to share that credit with him. Um, my agent, Blocktown Agency, for believing in me since 2001. As soon as I got there and I walked into those doors, I didn't have to audition. They believed in me. And um, here I am today now, one of their choreographers, um, all of them up there, every single one of those agents. And, um, and then, um, most importantly, um, definitely my number one person to thank is God because he allowed me to be around people or he's brought people in my life that's made a difference in my life, who's changed my life from, you know, your Lisa Left Eye Lopez to uh, my current friends that I have today. So I am so grateful for all of those people um, from family and friends and agents. And I'm also um, just, I mean, I'm just grateful to be healthy, to be alive. And I just want to let people know that because I am still alive, that my work is not done yet. I still have lots of things to do. My greatest thing hasn't been done yet, and I'm waiting for that to happen. And that's great. Yeah. And how can how can um, young people and parents that's watching this interview how can they find you? All right, you can. Um, I'm on Twitter, of course, and it's at Chuck Maldonado. Everything is Chuck Maldonado. If you Google Chuck Maldonado, you'll be able to find my Twitter, my Facebook, my Instagram. Everything is at Chuck Maldonado. It's very simple to find me. You made it very simple for people to find me. I don't have a crazy name, okay. a crazy dance name or nothing like that. Just Chuck Maldonado. And um, of course, I'm with Block Talent Agency. So if anybody's ever watching that wants to hire me, call them. <laughs> and um, But yes, yeah, so that's pretty much so. Um, I don't have a website right now. I did. I don't have one right now currently, so I don't have a way for them to That's fine. That. Well, we would like to thank you from... Uh, the bottom of, my, of our hearts from Dance Mogul Magazine. Uh, we appreciate, you know, the fact that you've done all of those mm -hmm. great accomplishments and that you took time out of your life to sit here and share it with the rest of the world. And uh, we see this as a great example, um, what, what you're doing here. We know that this is important because we